1991, KPFA and the Pacifica Foundation constructed a state-of-the-art broadcast facility. By this time, government grants provided a share of Pacifica's budget, but it was KPFA's listening community who donated $2 million to build the new studio. A monument to the station's role in Bay Area cultural and political life, the building also signaled Pacifica's ambitions for the future. Tonight, KPFA celebrates the opening of a new home in a beautiful building with a major new composition by one of the most honored and revered composers in the United States, Lou Harrison, called Homage to Pacifica. I'm really Pat very Scott. grateful to Lou Hill for establishing Pacifica and for really inventing listener-supported radio. But I think that uh, Pacifica has changed from Lou Hill's time, that we have a different population that we're broadcasting to, a much larger population. Hey, listen to In the summer of 1995, and after 32 years on the air, Bill Mandel's show was canceled, along with a number of other longtime programs. Since KPFA is listener supported, I'd like to know why the listeners weren't consulted before these drastic program changes were implemented. Marcy Lockwood. An incredible amount of listener input. We may not have gone to each and every one of you in this room and said, what do you want? I still don't understand how you know who's listening. What is the big click? You said, uh, we know there's a big click, and that means that people are no longer listening to something. I don't understand it. We don't want a commercial station. We don't want a commercial station. I want a station either. about the KPFA of 1975. Everybody wants a piece of it. And because there is nothing else, that people don't have access to anything else, they want to make sure that they keep this. This is theirs. This is their special treasure. And sometimes what they see as individuals in terms of how this station can be used is not necessarily what's best for a larger group of people. You belong to us. You are responsible to us. You need to work with us. You cannot violate something that is in your hands to preserve. I leave it at that. In 1999, KPFA's 50th year on the air, new officers heading the Pacifica Foundation began to make decisions that staff and listeners considered arbitrary. At a media network founded on dialogue, communications broke down. In a move that sent shockwaves through KPFA, the executive director of Pacifica today fired general manager Nicole Sawaya. Sawaya says she was shocked and dismayed. Last Friday, veteran Pacifica broadcaster and Polk Award winner Larry Bensky was fired by executive director Chadwick for discussing Sawaya's dismissal on the air in violation of Pacifica's so-called gag rule. There are more than a thousand people demonstrating against the Pacifica Foundation, which owns public radio station KPFA, and they're incensed over the way Pacifica yanked a staffer off the air yesterday and then took live broadcasts off the air altogether. Protesters outside KPFA have been claiming for the past two weeks that Pacifica was considering selling the station. The foundation steadfastly denied it. Today, another voice was heard. I take no pleasure in being here today. But I cannot remain silent while Pacifica's national board holds serious discussions in secret about selling KPFA. Who's station? Our station! Who's station? Our station! KPFA's broadcast license, which cost a little over $1,000 when first granted, was now estimated to be worth $75 million. When news spread of the station's possible sale, 
more than 10,000 listeners took to the streets in support of KPFA. This is something that is precious. This is something that is ours. This is something that we paid for. This is something that we believe in. And this is something that we intend to keep. On August 1st, KPFA resumed broadcasting. Three months later, with tension still unabated, the Pacifica National Board promised not to sell any of its five stations. KPFA had started with 39 listeners who believed in its possibilities. Now the station had become what its founders once dreamed of, a powerful and vocal community of the air. KPFA on the air by filmmakers Veronica Silver and Sharon Wood. You can reach them at Veros, V-E-R-O-S, at AOL.com. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Shufo Dokadu, Aaron Mate, Anjali Comet, Nicole Salazar, Steve Martinez, Honey Massoud. Special thanks to Dennis Moynihan, Chuck Skurich, Elizabeth Press, Robbie Karen, Peter Currys, Miguel Nagara, Mike DeFilippo, and all the staff at Democracy Now! Today, I'll be at UC Berkeley's LeConte Hall at noon, then on tonight to KPFA, celebrating 60 years. On, Friday, on Thursday, we're in Palo Alto at 7.30 p.m., First Presbyterian Church. Friday noon, we're in Sacramento with a benefit for access, Sacramento Public Access TV. Then on to Grass Valley at 6 p.m. at the Grass Valley Veterans Hall with KVMR Radio. On Saturday, we're in Taos, New Mexico at 3 p.m. at the Kachina Lodge with KRZA. And at 7 p.m. at St. Francis Auditorium in Santa Fe with KSFR. We continue our community media tour Sunday. I'll be at the Border Book Festival in Mesilla, New Mexico at 11.30 and in Silver City, New Mexico at 3 p.m. with a benefit for Gila Mimbres Community Radio at 7 p.m. with KUNM at UNM's Woodward Hall in Albuquerque. On Monday, we'll be in Spokane, Washington at 7 p.m. at Gonzaga University for a benefit for KYRS LPFM Thin Air Radio. Then on to Sandpoint, Idaho, Missoula, Helena, Bozeman, Montana, Boise, Idaho, Los Angeles, Phoenix, Tucson, Lawton, Oklahoma, College Station, Texas, Austin, St. Louis, Madison, and Denver. You can check our tour at democracynow.org. We're also tweeting. You can go to our website and find out. I'm Amy Goodman. Happy birthday, Pacifica. Thanks for joining us.